Hello YouTube, Chrome Freak here. Probably wondering why you're looking at my stove. Oh, well, I'm gonna do a cooking video. That's what I'm gonna do. Watch this guys. First I gotta turn the stove on. I gotta do this right, okay? Real low, 150 degrees, bake. Fan kicks on, hope that doesn't bother you. Sorry. Okay, I'm gonna do a little cooking video here. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Give me one second. Okay, here's what's on the menu. Moisin Nagant. <laughs> it ought to be pretty tasty, huh? Nah, guys, what I've done is I've taken some, some Militech oil, and I didn't have quite enough Militech to do everything. I was running low. I thought I had another bottle here. Unfortunately, if I do, I can't find it right now. So what I decided to do was mix what little bit of Militech I had left with, with some ballastol. It only took very little ballastol actually. But to fit this in this oven, I don't know if you guys got an oven this big or not, it's going to barely fit in here. But I'm going to put it in there. I've done some research today on YouTube, my well, own YouTube, <laughs> on um, YouTube, unbelievable, on um, the internet about Militech. I went to their site. I also did some other research on metals and all that. And from what I can gather, if I can bring this up to no more than 150 degrees, but somewhere right around 150 degrees, it should open up the pores in the metal where it will impregnate the metal with the oil. So that's what I'm trying to accomplish here. I'm not going to hurt anything. However, do this at your own risk. Know how good your oven is. Don't, you know, if you get your gun real hot, you can change the um, molecules in it and damage it. So you, I ask, you know, you do this at your own risk, really. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that get up to temperature. And in the meantime, we're going to come on over here. And I'm going to be putting some flits on basically the bolt. I've got the bolt completely disassembled here from the last video. And the trigger and the sear. And I'm going to, there's my cat. I'm going to get flits all over everything. And there's certain areas on the bolt and also on the trigger trigger and sear that I want to especially hit and I'm not going to be taking any metal down it's important to understand but I am going to be doing some good buffing I got my Dremel ready to go and um, what I'll do is I'll move the camera up close so you can watch exactly what I'm doing and we're going to really get it nice and buffed out to hopefully smooth everything out and avoid any kind of sticky bolt that the Mo Moisin Madonna is known for so here we go guys I hope you enjoy this give me a minute I'll be right back Hello YouTube, Chrome Freak back. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put flits on everything. It's nothing um, complicated here. Now wherever, let me show you guys real quick. When you take your moisten apart, and you can kind of see everywhere when you're going to use the trigger, where metal is going to rub metal. And you kind of get a vision of that, and then you're going to go ahead and we're going to put flits on the area where metal rubs metal. Get that top right there. This is all inside of the trigger, so we'll go ahead and we'll do that too. But this very top actually had some wear on it, so I know that's rubbing. Okay, I'm going to sit that there. I'm going to let it dry. I'm going to take the trigger itself and you can see a little bit of wear right on the very top right there we'll put some flits there on the outside a little bit just to clean it up and a little bit inside right where the, it rides the, the sear rides inside of the hammer and I'll probably get that out with a rag or another q-tip I'm gonna let that sit and dry and I'm gonna go ahead the next would be the firing pen and I'm just going to go ahead and, and concentrate on this area right here. Now what I'll do with the Dremel is I'll probably go ahead and do the entire firing pin. But my main area that I want to get, I don't want to take metal off, but I want to really buff out good is around there. And then I'm just going to put flits on everything because I really want to clean this bolt up and make this bolt look really good and new. So I'm going to do one side right now and then later we'll do the other. But also you get an idea by looking at your bolt when you first open up your Moisin. Get a good idea where the bolt rides inside of the receiver itself, what's hitting what, and you kind of want to buff all that too. You're not hurting nothing as long as you're not taking metal off. Buffing is a good thing. 
Once we get it all buffed up, we'll do a little slight, I mean very little bit of oil onto everything. And I'm just going to go ahead and just get the flits everywhere I can. And it goes the same with all the other parts. I'll be even doing the bolt handle because I just want to get a good look too. Not only is it serving a purpose, we're going to get a good look. I also wanted to tell you guys about uh, the Iraqi veteran. If you go back to the last Moise and the Gaunt video that we did where we degreased everything, got all the Cosmoline off of everything, I gave a shout out to um, Iraq veteran. And I still believe he has the most comprehensive videos on YouTube about the Moise and the Gaunt. And uh, he actually takes the spring here and takes a full length out of it. I'm not going to do that yet because I've yet to even fire this moisten. So until I do and I really know what everything feels like, if I need to do that, if it feels like I need to do that, I will. I will. But as of right now, I'm not. I'm, I'm not going to do that. So, but if you guys want to go over there and take a look at his video, and I, um, I can't remember what he called that video, but you'll find it. Just, Look in all his Moise and the Gaunt videos, and it's really worth watching. The guy's extremely knowledgeable about Moise and the Gaunt's, heck, about all firearms, um, for that matter, but really about the Moise and the Gaunt. He's got some really in-depth stuff on it, and he is very, very good. I highly recommend him. I really do. And um, he just seems like a genuine good guy also. Works in a gun shop, too, and um, can't go wrong there. Okay, guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let all this stuff just dry up a little bit, let the flitch do its work, and when we come back, we'll start the buffing. By that time, I'm hoping, to, uh, um, I'm hoping the metal, stop, my cats are fighting. I'm hoping the metal is up to temperature, and I'll turn the oven off, and I'll just let that stuff sit in there and get back to, let it cool off in there. There's no reason to pull it out yet. And then we'll also pull all that out when it's ready. We'll wipe it all down. By that time, hopefully... I'll have the bolt completely buffed out, ready to go. The trigger, the sear, we'll put everything back together. I can't wait to show you what I bought to set the gun on. Uh, I got a little new um, little thing I'm gonna unfold on YouTube in this video, it's kinda cool. I've been wanting one for a while to do videos out here with, and I I'm not gonna give it away. I'll show you guys here um, at the end of the video, you'll see it, or during the video. Okay, uh, YouTube, we'll be back in a little bit. Hello, YouTube, I'm back. Okay, I got the oven turned off. I brung that up. To, I brung the um, the barrel, the receiver, and all the little parts up to 150 degrees. I let it uh, sit for a little while. I turned it off. I'm going to let them sit in the oven and come back down to room temperature. Then we'll take them out, wipe them down, make sure everything looks good, and then we'll. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start buffing the bolt, the sear, and the trigger. And I won't show everything because it would be a long, boring, boring video, but I'll just, uh, the main things, I got a new buffing pad on the Dremel. I'm gonna put the Dremel down, I got it right now on high. I'm gonna go ahead and put it over to medium speed. Very controllable. And all I'm doing, once again, is I'm just buffing. Once we get everything ready to go, to my liking, and uh, back together, we'll go ahead and gauge it, make sure the firing pin is where it needs to be everything's good there and we'll go ahead and put the rifle back together and hopefully to be a good video I'll go ahead and I'll start right here with the firing pin and I'm just gonna come around this area and that's all I'm going to do so it's pretty self-explanatory and what's gonna happen is this um, this wax will stick onto this buffing pad and I'll be able to use the buffing pad quite a bit without even putting wax on more of the metal in fact, I'll do this whole piece. Kind of need to uh, readjust it here just a second. Hold on. Let's pop this up. Bring it all the way out to the end. Gives me a little bit more work, working room. Bring that back down. Turn it back on. That's yeah, still a little tight, but it'll be all right. I can get the job done. I'm just bringing it around, and all I'm doing, guys, is buffing. I'm not taking metal down. I don't want to get it hot. And I got my reading glasses on. With my reading glasses, I can see any imperfections in there, and I just try to smooth it out a little bit. We're just trying to eliminate friction. Is all we're trying to do when everything's back together. We're just any t any place metal touches metal, the smoother it can be, the better it's going to be. You'll have a better trigger. A, uh, the action will work better. I mean, just it's it's good for everything. And I do this on a lot of different firearms. Almost every firearm I own, really, you can do some kind of work like this to it. And you can do it yourself. And you'll be shocked at some of the improvements you'll get out of it. But look at that. Look how pretty it's already coming. And anyway, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do this entire piece. 
mainly this area here. And I can, I can see some deep scratches in there from wherever from being used. And I'll try to buff them out as best I can without taking metal down. And we'll just go over the entire bolt. Then when I get back to the sear and the trigger, I'll turn the camera back on. We'll be back in a minute. Okay, YouTube, we're back. Okay, I don't know if you can see the difference, but sit, I don't know if the camera's picking up, but sitting here, wow, what a difference from buffing this down. I mean, it's huge. This thing is looking dynamite. I didn't want to get too aggressive on the sear and the trigger, but I smoothed it out pretty nice, buffed it down, got the bluing off in a couple areas, but mostly not. I didn't, Like I said, I did not want to get too aggressive with it. That's kind of how it sits right there when it goes back into the gun. And um, that's that. We're going to go ahead and we're going to put the bolt back together. Pretty self-explanatory. You're going to need some kind of wood. In this case right here, I'm going to use uh, this hammer. I hope it don't fall off and fly everywhere. Kind of pick yourself a nice... Because you really got to put some pressure down on this. Screw this back on. That's it right there. Nope. You got to make sure this line right here is right where it's supposed to be. It lines up even with the notch like that. And if you did it properly, it's going to be on about a 45 degree angle, angle from the bolt, as you can see, just like so. And this would be nice and flush on top. Your screw, the line would be lined up with the screw. They put that, that mark in there um, for firing pin adjustment. Okay, the next piece that's going to go on, this simply slides right on down, right over your firing pin, and right into the groove right here. Get this hammer out of the way, we don't need that. And this simply fits right on. Like so. And that's basically it. That's back together. And what we'll do is I'm going to move the camera again. I'm sorry about all these cuts, but this is the way this is going to be done. It's just so many little parts here. But it's going to be nice. And I'm telling you, I think I can feel a huge difference. There was a couple burrs on the um, sear and also on the tip of the hammer right here, or hammer, trigger, that I've gotten off. So I think it's going to work good. Like I said, I did not want to get too aggressive with this until I shoot it. See what it feels like. If it needs some more adjustment, in my opinion, then I'll do it. Okay, guys, we'll pick it back up. I'll get the, um, the dinner out of the, out of the oven. We'll clean that off, get all the excess grease oil off of it, and we'll start reassembling the whole rifle. We'll be back in a minute, guys. Okay, guys, dinner is served. <laughs> We're going to go ahead. Everything should be cool because it's been sitting for quite a while. It's still a little warm, but nothing major. Just stay right here. And get everything out. Okay, looks good. Close up the oven. Come on around. What I'm going to do now is we're going to go ahead and just wipe off the excess oil off of everything. And I even put the tools in here, guys. Guys, I mean everything went in. Screws, everything to get re-oiled. And uh, whew, got a lot on it. Anyway, all I'm going to do is just wipe down the excess oil. As you can see, this rag's kind of dirty. It's been used for this. That's what I was wiping it down with before. And I'm just going to get all the excess off, and hopefully it'll leave a nice thin film, and it feels really good. It does, and it looks good, too. I'll get inside of the mag here. This is your internal magazine. I'll get in there, and I'll clean out the excess of that in just a minute. And that's about it. I'm going to pause it one more time after I get the oil off of everything right here. And basically, I got a new toy, and uh, we'll be putting reassembling the... Um, the firearm on with my new toy. I can't wait to show you this and we'll be doing a separate complete review on that in a different video. But that's about it. Just since this is all simple stuff right here. Just getting the excess oil off and hopefully there is a nice bit of oil that the metal itself has sucked in. It's impregnated the metal with the oil. So you got a good nice film of protectant on there and nothing's going to rust up on you. And everything should work nice, smooth and properly. 
That's what we're going for. And that's about it. We'll go ahead and pause it here. I'm just going to wipe everything down. That's all I'm going to do. The barrel's clean inside from last time. Everything's good. Just getting the excess off. Okay, guys, we'll be back in a minute. Okay, guys, we're back for the final segment. I'm going to have to um, edit together quite a bit of little cuts. And I'm not very good at editing, so it might take me a little while to get it up. But here's my new toy. I bought this vise to do videos on out here where the lighting is much better instead of in the garage. I do have a table vise in there I normally use, so this um, was a splurge for me to go out and get this, and um, I like it a lot. It's got little compartments to put everything in, and, and it's going to come in quite handy for doing videos. It's really neat. I'm, gonna, well, I'm not even going to get into it because I'll do a complete separate review of this, but needless to say, it does everything from pistols to breakover shotguns to rifles, you name it. Even ARs will fit in here. Uh, it's awesome. And I think it's a great buy, and um, we'll get, like I said, we'll do a separate video on that. Now let's go ahead and, and proceed to getting this, for, for the Russian linguists out there, Musin, na, Musin Nagan, Moisin Nagan, in my language, back together. And here goes the cat talking. Let me, let me stop for just a second, guys, I'm sorry. Hold on. Okay, guys, sorry about that. The cat is screaming at a raccoon on the porch. Anyway, the first thing we're going to put back in is we're going to put the trigger back in and the sear. You'll simply fit the trigger, the sear into the trigger. Got it upside down. <laughs> like so, just like that. And I took it back out again. Okay, just like this. It goes down in here. I, I'll get the screw started. I got a little gun tight here. It's made by Loctite specifically for firearms. Put a lot, just a little bit of glue onto the screw just to keep it from vibrating out, but it's not a ridiculous strength that if you need to get it back out again, it's not going to be an issue. And we will be taking this back out probably to make adjustments, I'm sure. So I'm just going to hand tighten it for now. And then I'm going to get the pen, kind of flip it on its side. You know you can't see this right now, but just line the hole up with a pen and it'll push right in. Like so. Just like that, it's back in feels pretty good. I mean, it's hard to tell right now, but it feels better like this than it did. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to take the, the whole action. We're going to lay it into the stock. At this point here, I'm going to loosen up the clamps. This is really neat. It's got a clamp on it. Holding everything together, I'm going to flip it upside down. Kind of hits now here, but maybe I get that out of the way this way. Okay, well, it's workable like that. And I'm going to put the screws in. Tighten it down. Probably should have put some lock. In fact, I'm going to. Well, let me get this one tightened down. I'll put lock tight in it after I get it back together. I get the screwdriver on. Sorry, guys. Okay, the cat kind of threw me off a little bit. Now what we're going to do from this point, look what I just did. <laughs> Gotta put the magazine in first and the trigger guard. Not head. And here's a cat jumping up here. This is what messed me up tonight is this cat. We got a couple of them. And they can be a pain in the butt. Like they just showed a second ago. Anyway, this is pretty simple. There's a hundred videos doing this on YouTube right here. The same thing I'm doing. Just going to screw them together. Flip it back over. I'll let you use the clamps this time. Clamp it in. It's nice and tight. This ain't going anywhere. I should have put this in first, but you know what? I could probably do it upside down. Let's see how good I am. Well, there it is locks up and in, simple as that. Take this screw, the longer of the two goes to the rear. You know what, I'm going to put some Loctite on this one, I got a free hand this time. Just a little bit, you don't need a lot. A little, oop, that was a lot. I'm doing real good here now, ain't I? Anyway guys, just put it in there, simply tighten it up. Getting tired. It's been a long, long day. 
You don't want to torque these down either. You know, just good and tight, but not crazy tight, just like so. Okay, now we're going to go ahead. We're going to put the front barrel band, I mean the, the front bore grip on, and slide your barrel bands on. Now make sure you got two different size ones, and make sure the biggest one goes to the back, and make sure your connection, there's a link connection, make sure it goes down toward the bottom. Slide it on, up over, and right into place, just like so. And the same thing for this one. Make sure the link lock is going to the bottom, I almost put it on wrong there. And this one's going to be a little bit tighter. In fact, a lot tighter. Okay, get on there now. Now it came off really simple, but it's going to be a... It's going to be a mother going back on. There it goes. And locks. You get it past the water. There it is. Okay, it's in place. There's actually a groove inside the notch. I didn't even notice it. And it locks in just like so. So it goes about halfway on, just like that. And that's done. We'll put our bolt in and see how it feels. Okay, guys. Sorry about that interruption again. You take the bolt. Oh, that's not enough. And you turn it just like so, put it in the back, pull the trigger, lock it in. Pull the trigger, Let's try the safety, which would come quite well, hard to do too. Out and over like that would be safe, there's no way to fire a gun. Flip it back over, pull the trigger, check your action. Wow, this feels really good. It really does, it feels fantastic. Let me move this stuff out of the way now. This is locked in place really nice. You see everything I moved before that. This is really, just feels good. Nice and smooth. It just feels really good. I wait to get it out there shooting. But now it's quite tight enough. Down a little bit more on these tabs. I'm going to do a full review of this gun vise here in another video, but um, it's as simple as that, guys. This um, feels really good, it really does. I am going to have to get some oil on some internals now, and we'll finish that up, but that's pretty well it. I'm going to end this video now. I will grease the trigger up, probably take the, um, the bolt back out, pull the trigger, and I'll probably put some grease and some oil and stuff right here on the trigger to help it a little bit more. And a little thin film of oil throughout the action and the bolt. But that's about it. All right, guys. Please leave comments. PM me if you need anything. And thank you for watching. Good night, YouTube. Oh, once again, Iraqi Veteran 8888. Most comprehensive videos on the Moisin Nagant on YouTube. All right, guys. See ya.